The only thing I've ever wanted to be is a biologist. Never wanted to do anything else. You knew that at an early age. Probably before I could tell you what a biologist was, I just knew I wanted to be outside. Garrett Langwa told us all we needed was a few hours to spare and an open mind. He leads us along one of Lubbock's canyon lakes, never out of sight of curious onlookers who've grown accustomed to Garrett's numerous journeys through here, both day and night. I'm here at Texas Tech to earn a PhD. I study the behavior of uh, large tropical bats. I moved here having never set foot in Lubbock from South America where I was living down in the jungles on the border of Paraguay and, and Brazil. Where they have a lot of large bats. tropical bats. Exactly. exactly. We were quick to find out um, it isn't doing, bats uh, our host you know, wants to that, show uh, us. There's the path, but before we do that, I want you to look. That's one of uh, our indicators right here that a, that a beaver came up right through those cattails. A beaver? A beaver. Came up right through those cattails. Beaver in Lubbock, Texas. You can see right where he turned around. And went back. And went back. I, I, I'm sorry. How do you know it was a beaver? Why couldn't that be a dog? I'll, or, I'll, I'll show you. I'll, really? You, we're not done yet. If we take Garrett at his word, we are on the path to spotting an animal and, and that has been extinct here in the Llano Estacado area of the South Plains for 5,000 years. And now I want you to look here and here, there. Somebody gnawed off these trees. It wasn't somebody. <laughs> I wasn't out here doing it. And right here. So this right here is from a beaver. Yes. And beavers have not been seen in this area for 5,000 years. Correct. They were all locally extinct. Those, dr those droughts took them out and it's taken them that long to get back here. Um, our research has shown uh, that they have uh, cryptically been recolonizing uh, up, upstream. They've been coming up the tributaries of the Brazos River. This is a beaver highway right here. A beaver highway? Yeah. Let's take the beaver highway. <laughs> Garrett's research with bats was put on hold the day he heard that the carcass of a dead beaver had been found in Lubbock. Well, as you can imagine, the usual chorus of critics and social media skeptics cried foul. None doubted it more than his PhD advisors at Texas Tech. That was significant because that was our first evidence. And so we extracted the skull and now it is preserved back at the Natural Science Research Laboratory um, on Texas Tech campus. That first beaver scientifically documented in Lubbock. Is the left incisor broken or is it simply back in the skull? For his academic advisory team, Garrett's claim seems yeah, outlandish that cute. any species yeah, would return to its habitat well. after an absence of 5,000 years. Garrett had more work to do before the world of science would accept his highly unlikely hypothesis. I had placed night vision cameras out here. I wanted evidence to show people photos and videos of beaver. They haven't been here in 5,000 years. I needed to make sure that all my I's were dotted and all my T's were crossed uh, before I came to my mentors with this. I found some beaver. Exactly. You know, on the South Plains. Exactly. Uh, I don't want to be, you know, laughed out of the laboratory. So I deployed those night vision cameras and I started recording all over this area. I sort of hung off that tree a bit and mounted the camera right at, at the base to look out on the water. It's where I finally caught them. We saw that, that tail flapping and there's nothing else in the world that looks like that. And how long is that clip? Oh, it's, that clip's only, you know, five, seven seconds, something, something like that. Yeah, this is a very young animal. I remember he sent me an email saying, I've got it, I've got it. Very likely a dispersing animal. Getting that final concrete observation took a lot of effort and seeing that come to fruit was really exciting. It may be grainy and dark, but it's one of the most important six second periods in Garrett's life. Solid proof that defies science and silences the skeptics. We have shown now at this point, they're here and they're living here. This is their, this is their habitat now. 
This so where are they during the day? Are they underwater? They're nocturnal. They're in these burrows. The burrows are underwater. It's part of their security. What does this mean or what should it mean? That shows that we're being good stewards of the land. There's always room for improvement, but it does show that we're doing um, our best and not just by our own uh, merit, by that it's got the beaver stamp of approval as well. <laughs> beaver are somewhat semi-aquatic pioneers. Where beaver show up, studies have shown you get more great blue heron, you'll get muskrats, otters can even show up. Remember, beaver are what we call a keystone species. Droughts are shortened, wildfires are less frequent. Beaver have a lot of real ecosystem benefits for us. So this is a good thing. This is absolutely a good thing. You know, these beaver, they um, incorporate iron on a molecular level. My God, there. Garrett does not realize how honored he is. This is, it's a gift from God that he would be able to actually be part of documenting this reoccupation of this part of West Texas. To actually have a colony of beavers, and that's what he documented, in place more recent than four or five thousand years ago. This is truly a landmark event in that man's career. Garrett will go down as the guy that documented it. That's really changed things for our knowledge of the last five thousand years. That it changed the history of, of what we know and what might be possible here in the future. It is a story 5,000 years in the making. They had everything against them, and they made it here. So if you respect that pioneering spirit, you could find no better representative of that than these beaver. It was a small, brittle skull and a brief six-second video clip of two lovable rodents that put Garrett Langwa into the history books. <laughs> One of the things that I, I think I just have to accept, and I'm fine with it, is that uh, no one will ever remember uh, my work on tropical bats uh, here in Lubbock. They'll, they'll hopefully remember the beaver, which is still more than I could ask for. To say that the beavers have been welcomed back with open arms in Lubbock is an understatement. It's been a scientific celebration, even if it did take 5,000 years.